little word of apology on this video. Um, my connection wasn't very stable. There's a lot of corruption in the video, but um, I wanted to go ahead and post it anyway. I feel like it's an important message. Uh, just be amused by all of the uh, interesting uh, video <laughs> corruption coming in and out of that and, and just try to listen to the message. Um, Going to get a better better connection here next time. Enjoy the video. I wanted to talk for just a minute today about critical thinking because Shane has been talking about it on his shorts. And uh, I just, you know, it, it occurred to me some of the things that he said uh, deserve to be elaborated on. And uh, so I thought I'd do a quick um, little video on the importance of critical thinking. Because it's the it's the buzzword you hear a lot in uh, conversations about the public education system, um, the importance of uh, teaching our kids critical thinking, and yet the exact opposite is what's happening in the public schools. It's it's not that our kids are not being exposed to information; it's that the information that they're being exposed to is the only information they're being exposed to and they're not being educated. They're being indoctrinated with a certain mindset and they're being taught not to think critically except for their feelings. So they're being able to, they're being taught to feel critically. And there's a big difference between critical thinking and critical feeling. So I just want to talk a minute about what the word critical thinking means or critical feeling means. Um, it, the, the base word, of course, is critique. To critique something means to examine it thoroughly and to look at it from all sides and then be able to form an opinion based on the information that you, you gather. So if our children are sitting in a classroom and the teacher is teaching them one theory or one idea and then saying, now, children, you pair it back to me what I just told you, whether it's in a discussion or it's in a writing assignment or it's in a in a homework assignment or a report and we're on a test and the only thing that they are able to to be graded on is that one aspect or that one theory that they've been taught that is the antithesis of teaching critical thinking and it's not about um sitting a child down and saying read this paragraph and then um you tell me based upon the theory that I've taught you what this paragraph teaches you. That is not critical thinking. That's not critical thinking is not just drawing information out of something that you read or discuss um, or see. It, that is not critical thinking. Critical thinking is being able to look at all sides of something being presented and having an open mind enough uh, to be able to make a decision on how that, you know, is if that's true or not. Of course, the first thing that, um, you know, our modern age has destroyed is that there are absolute truths. And we could do a whole podcast on that, of course, or I mean, a whole uh, video on on that. That was the first, you know, destroy foundationally that all truth is subjective and that there there are no truths. I mean, even to the point of, you know, is murder, is murder a... a that murder is bad. Is that a truth? Is that an eternal truth? Is that a uh, a universal truth, um, an immutable truth, or is that just a somebody's opinion that murder is bad? And under any given set of circumstances, we can say, um, well, sometimes maybe murder is good. I think that our media, our entertainment media, has has you know. <laughs> made murder look really good in a lot of, of instances. And we don't need to worry about, you know, a justice system. We can just all be vigilantes. And in the name of, of uh, fairness, we can throw out the rules such as murder is bad. So we have to get back to universal truths. Of course, some things are subjective. I think green is the best color and blue is a, second uh, second choice. You may think red is the best color or yellow. Those are subjective truths to you and I, but we have universal truths that we need to, to focus on. But back to critical thinking, unless you have that as your baseline, unless you have certain immutable truths, you know, indisputable truths that are um, we all accept in our society and our social contract, um, 
then we are going to have continual chaos and there will be no option but to indoctrinate. And this is this is exactly where we are in the public system. We have too many um, disparaging opinions based on different people's truths. And there you go. We have no basis for having a rational discussion. So if we aren't teaching critical thinking in our schools, we better be picking up the banner and learning to think critically in our homes. And um, that's a responsibility really ultimately that does fall to parents anyway, but uh, it's never been more important than it is right now to be teaching our children how to think critically. Of course, that presupposes that you as a parent know how to think critically and that you yourself are not just indoctrinating uh, your children with theories that don't necessarily stand the test of time or are for the betterment of our society. And uh, if you can't yourself think critically, if you can't look at a subject, any anything, and of course we're talking mainly these days about critical race theory, we're talking about evolutionary theory, we're talking about um, transgender theory, we're talking about feminist theory, these are not immutable truths. These are theories. And uh, if you can't look at some of those things and gather information from all sources and critically critique in your mind, not from your feelings, but from your mind, um, if those theories are good or bad or, or indifferent and what the true facts are of it, then you are not critically thinking. Um, the difference between critically thinking and critically feeling are uh, night and day, right? So this is really what's being taught in our society now. It's critical feeling, right? We, we teach our kids um, to write about how they feel. We teach them to take up causes. We're teaching them to be activists. And if a child um, isn't taught to discern between feelings and thoughts, between fact and opinion, um, then they believe that their own feelings are uh, more important than than actual facts, and certainly more important than somebody else's truth, e even if the truth isn't an immutable truth, even if it is just about what color is best, <laughs> right? So this is how chaos happens in society, and people are just so asleep about this. They don't uh, they're being they've been lulled into this idea that their feelings have more uh, have more importance than than true fact. So one of the reasons why uh, embracing the the paradigm in society that we are going to honor uh, critical feeling more than we uh, honor critical thinking is that you, you know, you have these people that become so convinced that if they have their feelings hurt, that they're going to, uh, they're going to go commit suicide. And so that's where, you know, your, your opinions or your belief system, especially if you're a religious person or just a moral person who doesn't believe we ought to be embracing, um, the sexualization of children and making them choose their gender when they're five and then acting immediately to affirm um, a five-year-old gender or seven-year-old gender, or even a 12 or 14 or eight or 16-year-old gender uh, transition, um, that, that now because you are violating their feelings, that they have the almost the obligation to go and do some harm to themselves. And you cannot voice your your critically thought out arguments without uh, violating their critical feelings. And this is where we are. We've somehow embraced this. And the thing that's just so disturbing about what's going on in society today is that it's like a mass hypnosis has taken place. It's like we've been so long conditioned to not be able to think critically. We've been so conditioned for uh, probably since the 1980s to simply accept what authorities tell us and what the media tells us, what celebrities tell us, uh, what the news tells us, 
<laughs> and our, our government officials tell us we've, we've abrogated all this critical thinking to, to the experts. And anybody who's not an expert can't possibly have a viable opinion. Um, and by so doing, we've just gone into this deep sleep, almost this hypnosis. Um, I've heard it called, I'm trying to think of the term. It's a, a term for like a deep societal hypnosis and the inability to break out. And that's where we are. Uh, we are in this society that was very much like the French Revolution, where people simply accepted certain certain theories and paradigms without questioning them, without thinking through it critically. And the same thing in, you know, pre-World War, World War II Germany. Um, we're in a very dangerous place. And if it weren't for those of us who are insisting on having our freedom of speech and who are speaking out and are not afraid to go to jail, be in Facebook jail at least, uh, but or in YouTube jail or where whatever jail uh, they put us to clamp down on our free speech, we will not be silenced. And I'm one of those. And I, I want to encourage you to resurrect the idea of critical thinking in your own life. Just you start. And once you know that you can do that, you can you can gather information without it blowing your mind that people have a different point of view and sit down and reason through it with somebody get get on facebook and just have a conversation and allow yourself to have an open mind about things that you maybe previously thought were absolutely true i in the last 20 years i i can you know go back through my my writings and and see where i have i've radically changed some of my ideas and things that i thought were pretty um you know central to my own life philosophy have have radically changed about my religion about my politics about how i view society about even the you know lgbtq community having a gay son um radically changed a lot of my my attitudes because for some reason i was i was raised um to in a home where there was actually a lot of contention and i had to be defending my position a lot i had to be thinking through what I was going to say, why why I had the opinion I had, why I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and uh, I, would, I had to defend that. And so it, it trained me early on to think through the facts and to operate out of my left side of my brain because I, my my feelings were not honored. And you know, at the time that was very kind of, really kind of painful, but I'm so grateful for it now that um that I don't rely upon my feelings. As feelings change, you know, how many times have you? fallen in love with somebody or been extremely attracted to somebody only to find out they're, you know, they're completely wrong for you or not, not the greatest person or the same with, you know, somebody that you just thought you couldn't stand that later turned out to be quite a good friend or even a best friend. I mean, we've all gone through that, you know, where sometimes the feelings that we have, they can be very strong about something. And um, even about, even about religious things or about, Po political things and we find out later that that we just needed more information and uh we just needed to have more experience and once we got more information and more experience those feelings changed um it's part of the human experience to have changing feelings and so uh you know it's just so important to develop that ability to think critically so we don't get stuck and that's, those are my thoughts on that. I'd love to hear your comments.